guys welcome back to my youtube channel today we are getting into the second p that is going to help you got your get your hope back so if you're new here um we are in a devotional that is a restoring of hope devotional or hope come alive or hope revival something like that that is going to help you and we're talking about tips that that are going to help you get your hope back and um in the last video which was on monday we talked about um prayer as the first p that will help you get your hope back and so today we are talking about um the second p that will help you get your hope back and it's praise oh man i know that sometimes to praise god when there's nothing that seems praiseworthy in your life is crazy it's not the best thing to do but remember the bible talks about we are supposed to give god a sacrifice of praise a sacrifice only happens when there is nothing okay a sacrifice of praise only happens when there is nothing that looks like i should be praising god it seems like i should be hating god or i should be like i don't want to worship anymore i should be like ah oh, man i don't want to be in that thing of praising god i can only praise god when the business works out i can only praise god when the degree is granted to me i can only praise god when they get the job i can only praise god when i get the child i can only praise god when i get the marriage or the relationship or all of the things the un fulfilled longing that you have that we talked about on monday you know when that gets fulfilled that's when you praise god no mm -mm, that is not it we praise god right now when we are in a place of we are losing our hope that is what will bring our hope back and so we are talking about a man called david okay we're talking about a man called david who went through some of the hardest things in life you know david was anointed to be king and you know he didn't become king for about 15 years uh, but he was anointed but he he was he wasn't put in a place where god he was um settling him or establishing him for him to be king so he's anointed carrying this anointing of knowing i should be king but still not having anything that looks like him being king so some of you are carrying a word you know god is god gave you a word maybe to start a revival in a certain city maybe god gave you a word to say you are gonna live in this land that is beautiful or you're gonna get this job as a ceo whatever that god spoke to you that is so beautiful that is not happening that is an unfulfilled longing in your life and you're like man when is this going to happen we are talking about david because david knew how to praise god you know a lot of things happened in david's life you know after he after he fought goliath he get into a place where he's running away from saul because you know saul wants to kill him because saul knows that this nigga want to take my position as king so he would rather die so now he's running away and all of that you know um a lot of things happen and then later on he becomes king and then he flees from absalom i mean if you read the whole entire book um you will you you'll be you'll be be like amazed i mean you'll be amazed at all of the things that he went through but still he was a man of praise why do i say he was a man of praise because we get back to how you wrote uh the psalms okay we know that uh david wrote um the psalms and we see that when we're talking about psalms we're talking about hymns or songs and most of the songs we see that there is a there is a balance between him showing how he feels and him also knowing that his feelings can not uh, take authority over his life they cannot determine how much he shows up in the position of honoring God so he also has a balance of how he feels but at the same time has faith and so his faith is always moved by a certain uh, grace of praise so he praises God in such a way that um, all these feelings that I feel don't matter you know I can feel frustrated I can feel angry I can feel tired I can be downcast and all of these things but all that I feel I got to lay it down and come back to a place of praise because when I praise God it changes my perspective. It changes me. It doesn't change my situation, but it changes how I see God, how I see the situation that is going on because everything works together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So he knew that. And because he knew that, he was always in a place of praise. And the praise hymn that I'm going to talk about today is Psalms 42. You know, I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to read verse 5. And it says why are you down why are you cast down O my soul and why are you disquieted within me hope 
in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. I'm going to praise him for, for his help that is going to come. You know, I'm going to praise God, not because he's done anything right now. Things are tough for me. And some say that uh, this psalm, uh, according to theologians, you know, when you do your research, you realize that some say this psalm was written at the time when he was fleeing from Absalom. And, you know, uh, when you are when you are fleeing from someone, you are scared for your life. Right. And so he writes this still in a place of hope in God, my soul. You have to encourage yourself. Guys, we are talking about warriors of the kingdom of God and you are the warrior of the kingdom of God. And you've got to rise up out of your feelings. I'm not saying your feelings don't matter. Your feelings do matter, but you've got to come to a place and be like David and say, I can feel this, but I can still know the truth of who God is. You know, I have to come back to a place of what is the truth of the God that I serve. And that is what we are seeing in him because he says, why are you disquieted? My soul, why are you? cast down hope in God because when you are cast down you don't have hope and so when you hope in God you have this hope that things are gonna work out God is gonna show up God is gonna do what he says he's gonna do God doesn't speak a word and then he doesn't fulfill it because he watches over his word until it is fulfilled and God is not a liar so if God is not a liar everything that he spoke concerning my life is gonna happen I don't care how I don't care when but I'm still gonna praise my God because he's faithful and I want you to to rise up to get back to the place of praise I don't know I don't know where you are sitting right now maybe you are crying maybe you are tired maybe I don't know when you're gonna see this video maybe you're going to see this after five years and it's going to give you back your hope because it's truth you know we don't share anything else that is less than truth hope comes when we praise God I didn't understand it before until one time I'm gonna mention one of my greatest warriors when it comes to praise um, I mean I mean flesh warriors that I see every day and one of those warriors is Pastor Nathaniel Obasi you know when he does that hallelujah challenge ever since I started joining it I keep joining it why do I keep joining it because he taught me the art of praise that I didn't know I thought that praise was just like oh God I worship and praise you but how about I dance in praise and sing hymns of praise and see what it will do for your soul what it will do for your heart what it will do for your relationship with God I didn't know what it could do for me until I started joining hallelujah challenge and when I joined hallelujah Challenge, I was like even if I have a need an unfulfilled longing what I have learned is more important than the unfulfilled longing I have learned the art of praise and I want to share it with you get into your secret place Play your loud worship music hymns and praise God. Honor him, glorify him in heaven. In, in Revelation, it's written that in heaven, they praise God day and night. They don't rest. They be praising him day and night. And you just don't, you just want to praise him when you get what you want. You don't do it like that. You've got to get into a place where you pray into a place where you praise God, no matter the circumstance and be like David, because when you praise God, it just rises your hope up and remember that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. So if God in his presence get into the room when you praise him and imagine how you honor him when you pray, there is something that praise does in the kingdom of God. Remember when Paul and Silas were praying and praising God and all the chains were loosed all the gates were opened when we look in acts everything a lot happened doors opened you know chains were loose off of them in prison so imagine what praise can do when we praise god it brings hope and it brings glory of god and it does a lot for your soul and your heart and your mind and that is attractive to the kingdom of God. So I wanted to share that because um, uh, David goes on to write on verse 8 of chapter 42. He says, The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I want you to go and read that. 
you know i'm giving you today is a today's a wednesday i'm giving you today um wednesday and thursday to just to just uh, give yourself some time to read this every single day. Psalms 42. Read it. Let it marinate in your soul. I mean, uh, meditate on it and say, God, I want to I, I wanna hear you because this is beautiful. This is amazing what was happening here. So that your soul does not have to, to be cast down. And he says, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. I want you to go and praise God. That will give you your hope back. So, I'll see you again for the third P that will help you get your hope back in my next video on Friday. Meet me again 5 a.m. here. Let's talk about it.